Hey, what's up, you beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of Bailcast. I am Gio. And I'm Bart. And I have recently been getting uh, more and more into fitness, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been posting like my daily workouts and stuff, and everyone's always like, uh, I've had a couple of these and I thought they were pretty clever. They were like, show me that you're not having another baby or tell me you're not having another baby without telling me you're not having another baby, like under my training stuff or yeah. like when I show like my physique update. Yeah. So that topic's been coming up more and more about like me. It's kind of always been there. Like, when are you gonna have kids? And then once we had Taika, it's like, okay, they like every, like you guys have enjoyed him and really like him and stuff. And now that he's leaving the baby stage and he's becoming more of a toddler and like a bigger kid yeah and i'm more into fitness people are like oh shit it's, it's not gonna happen right so like the topic of kid having one not having one all of that has kind of like brought me to this question of like um did you always know that you wanted kids yeah you did mm -hmm. okay um i think like uh and how old were you when you were like yep that's it maybe like when i was like four what what <laughs> you were a kid thinking about having kids yeah you know when you're when you're like a kid right you have like your teddy bear and that kind of became like your um i don't know like your kid kind of like even before you have pets some, some of you guys might be born into families with pets but like i had like my favorite raccoon and that was How cute you had a raccoon yeah instead of like a teddy bear i had a raccoon and it was like this tall and like a big bushy tail and how cute yeah i thought it was so cool so uh, that's i've always loved raccoons because everyone had teddy bears i had a teddy coon or teddy raccoon whatever it's called and then um so that's what that was my baby and i'd put them in jackets and put them in like hoodies and stuff and like he would sleep underneath me and then i, I mean underneath I, you? I mean next to me oh. and i'd put the blanket like up to his little chin to make sure he like, kept his shoulders warm like i would take care of it all the time so he was your friend no he was like my son or my baby what the fuck and you remember this at four years old yeah and because i always took care of him the way uh i don't know maybe it was also a coping mechanism maybe like my childhood felt so stressed out Aww. that like like however i felt i regret asking you i this wanted question. to i wanted to express it to the baby raccoon like so you just fucking punch and shit fuck it up I, honestly i think when i was a kid i did oh I think there's times where it's the complete opposite, right? Yeah. Where I, like the raccoon would be like, can I go out and play? I'm like, yeah, you can go out and play. Because I couldn't go out and play. Oh, so that like, is so, so fucking sad. So I'm like, I'm like, you can go out and play. Go play. And I would take its, ra uh, its raccoon and I'll spin in like a helicopter. I'm like, it's going to outside to play. So there's times where the exact opposite. And I do remember times where I'm like beating the shit out of it. And I don't even know why. But then afterwards, I would feel bad. And I'm like, oh, why did I do that? And it was just probably because I was taking out whatever i don't know however i felt at home onto the raccoon and uh but then i think that was like the inception you know when i told you like uh when we first started talking i was like i never if whoever i marry i never want a divorce because that to me was like one of the worst things that's ever happened to me and i'm like no matter what happens if we have a kid like i don't mind i don't mind divor uh divorcing before having a kid but once there, there's a kid there we got to do whatever it takes to like uh make, make sure it, work. it work, yeah, works out and so I think that was like the more matured and nurtured idea of when I had like the little raccoon and how I wanted to take care of it. Damn. Yeah. There are just so many tangents I can go off of just with this one sentence that you gave me. Okay. So, okay. But that doesn't really tell me at least that you knew you wanted kids. It just tells me that that was your coping mechanism though like at what point were you like i'm having kids like because i think at four i don't think you were saying i want kids i think you were just nurturing what or i think you were just like you said you were coping so yeah. i think you whatever you were lacking you were giving it to your raccoon so yeah. like if you weren't getting nurtured you were nurturing it right but i don't think you were consciously making an effort or a, a, a conscious decision of like yeah, I want to have a little me when I grow up. I think, yeah, since four. What? Yeah. Well, how, I mean, what, which, what memory comes up, you know, where you're like, that's, that, that, I think that was the point. I think that's when I wanted the kids. I think that was the time. If you even had uh, that. Maybe like, just, maybe it was like, it wasn't even a, a point of like, I made an active choice and I crossed the line to have that thought. It could have just been, 
the repetitiveness of my parents telling me like I'm their kid, I'm just like them. And then so that became the norm. So like I think at four, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have a kid. I wanna have a kid. Um and it's just gonna be just like me. Wow. Yeah. That is so interesting. Yeah. I don't think I thought Almost about Almost like, you know, like some kids, like if their parents have PhDs, like graduating not just from high school, but from college is that's drinking water. You know, kind of like that where their brain, it's like, I don't even know if that was a choice. Like, go yeah, to graduate like school, a, that's not even a choice. It's just, it's going to happen. Yeah. Kind of almost like that. Maybe like that was so ingrained in me. I never had to, I never even saw that there was a choice. It just became, it was, you know? Yeah. Whoa. I don't think I thought about kids until, like me having my own kid. I think it's for me, it was actually the opposite. Really? Yeah. That now that I'm thinking about it, because for me growing up and like once I hit puberty and I was like at that age where I could possibly get pregnant, I was getting restricted from going out a lot, hanging out with friends, hanging out too late, who I was hanging out with. Like I was just really monitored because, you know, in the in the Latin community, at least I don't know what the stats are now, but at least back in the day, the stats were horrible where there was a lot of teen pregnancy. So I grew up always being told, like, you better not get pregnant. You better like not be messing around. You better like being pregnant was like the end all be all. Like it was like, it's going to ruin your life. Like, don't do that. Um, so I think for me, it was quite the opposite. It was never being pregnant too early. It was just being pregnant in general. No, I think it was too early. That was uh, the emphasis. Yeah. But as a kid, I just heard being pregnant equals bad. Like, I'm sure they were like, you have to be financially stable. You have to finish school. Like, I'm sure there was a map that I had to follow. Yeah. And there were steps to follow. But uh, yeah, getting pregnant for me was like, it It felt like it was end all be all. Your life's completely over. You know, because like, I just, I, I think I was raised in a very patriarchal household. And, you know, it was like the, the woman's responsibility to take on like this, this huge fucking task of like taking care of kids. So that meant no traveling, no pursuing your dreams, none of that. So it meant like life is over. So I think growing up, it was, it, I, I'm like, I, what the fuck would I do that for? Like, why would I ruin my body? Why would I like ruin my, you know, my chances of traveling, which I wanted to, like, I couldn't wait to do growing up. And then I was like, yeah, I'm not having fucking kids. Like I didn't want kids. And it wasn't until like my twenties where I'm like, well, I guess. Mm, I see. Yeah, like I guess I want kids. And then it started growing on me more and more because it was like what I had put in my own head about how your life is over and like your your body's all fucked up. Like I think I, that already started changing. I noticed the change too. You? Yeah. What? Cause remember when we had we would have sex like in your twenties, and then like sometimes if you don't have a condom, like just come at me, just come at me, and I'm like, wait, what? Are you kidding me? We're not ready to have kids. No. Oh, man. I was a horny fucking bastard, though. <laughs> and I was like, bust somewhere else. I'm like, I'm not busting inside. And I think that's why. You're so disciplined. I know. And I think that's the reason why. You know how, like, in the beginning, like, pretty much all my girlfriends before you, always all condoms. But I got really comfortable with you because we've been together for so long, right? And then I remember, like, if we didn't hey, have. Hey, condoms aren't 100%. No, they're not. They're, they're not. But that's already, I feel like that's already, like, three steps of discipline. I'm, uh, above a lot of people you son of a bitch why do you got to wear the same shit i'm wearing what do you mean we're in the same damn pants anyway and um well because you're on the same company and <laughs> and we have um, so many other clothes i don't know i was at the top of the, the top of the heap yeah mine was too and anyway. then um yeah, yeah and i think when we first got together that was one thing you always told me like damn you're so disciplined because like if we didn't have condoms we weren't having sex you were really disciplined i was I, I think i was a guy in the relationship yeah and i was just i mean i'm horny too but i think since the little baby raccoon i just knew the type of life i wanted to provide for the raccoon so if i didn't have the proper nest yet i didn't want to lay no eggs that's fucking awesome yeah so i think just because that has just been so ingrained because i just felt like my whole like childhood was just so fucked up that I'm like, um, I need to prevent anything remotely close like this from happening. And also, I've seen fucked up kids like in other families. And I'm like, whatever I see that is just clearly black and white fucked up, that's not even um, a preference. Then I'm like, because I've seen uh, like Asian tiger parents and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. I can see like the merit of that. You know, there's some flexibility. There's breathing room there. And then there's just some that are just straight up fucked up where like I go to my friend's house and then the dad's like just drunk on the couch, 
like the whole day and then like the six-year-old sis, uh daughter has to take care of the three-year-old kid oh and my I'm like, god I'm like, you saw that and i'm like i don't want that at all yeah our street was really diverse it's weird so i grew up on felson street and cerritos shout out to some of my people on felson street and You're like no, no 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 what are you doing no i think a lot of them don't live there anymore but it was super diverse like my best friend janesh was indian lived up the street uh, my best friend at the time was Mark. He lived across the street from me, half white, half Chinese. Um, both of his parents worked for an airline. Janesh is what? Janesh is Indian. Okay. Um, half white, half Chinese across the street. Both of them um, worked for an airline. So like, um, I don't know if that paid well or not, but like that was my first understanding of this guy has the most stable house on the whole street. Cause like they, they both, both of their parents wore uniforms to work. They work for like a big company. That's and, cool, huh? Because as a kid, it's like if you wore a business suit or some sort of like yeah, business looking uniform, you're like, oh shit, they're doing big shit. Yeah. And then like, so their house was the house that everyone went to because they already had three kids, like an older brother, Mark, and then his younger sister. So like, and they had way more toys than they needed. So if we're going to play hockey, all the kids go to their house and grab a hockey stick from the garage. That's how many hockey sticks they had. Oh shit. Hockey sticks, basketball, whatever. And they had a separate drink fridge in the garage. So when we were all uh, thirsty, we could just all go open the fridge. That's so cool. Yeah, and there was like like Kern's Nectar. That's when I started like like uh, learning about like Hansen's, like all the other weird drinks that aren't just at the uh, normal grocery store. And so I'm like, wow, this is what I really want. This is super cool. And which is why when he built our pantry, I'm like, yes, this is what I wanted. Because I don't see just Taika, but I see Taika and his four friends, his hoodlums, fucking going in. <laughs> <laughs> They're like... And like raiding it, you know? That's yeah. that's what I see. How cute. And then we had down the street, um, there's a guy. I don't know why we called him Polo, because obviously that's not his name, but it was him. Was he always wearing a polo? No. So he was like uh the the son of a guy, I don't even know if it's probably in and out of jail. Like he dressed like he was in jail. Like the I've only, only through Like he was always in an orange jumpsuit? No, no, no. This oh. style I've only seen people wear when they're in jail, where they're wearing baggy uh sweats. And then they wear basketball shorts over the sweats. What? Yeah. Like, I've only seen cholos that come out of jail wear, like, weird stuff like that. Like, I've seen people wear a long sleeve underneath a short sleeve. But I've never really seen people wear, like, um, baggy sweats underneath basketball shorts unless they've been to jail. Under So, the the, the shorts are over the sweats. <laughs> yeah. It's what unnecessary. Okay. But I don't know why, but that's... So, and he was, like, 13 or 14. And he was an uncle already to his uh i don't know like two six-year-old daughters i mean not uh oh, to, to his two six-year-old relative girl relatives and then there was a baby that was like three and then it was 14 taking care of the six taking care of the three and then he would drive sometimes like it was like a shitty beat up car on the front lawn and he would drive sometimes so it was just like that street was Pretty much like I, I would say my perspective on life because I just saw everything. Like I saw, yeah. I saw like um, the white lady across the street that looked like they could be a real estate agent, like like that kind of smile on the bench. And then down the street, um, we had DJ Curse. Shout outs to ninety two point three the beat and uh, the beat junkies. But why are you shutting them out? Because he was a huge like uh, he was huge in the whole hip hop movement in the '90s. Oh, I know, but you're shutting out 92.3. I'm like, what did they do? Oh, that's true. They're not even around. But he used to work for there. They are uh, around. <laughs> 92.3 the beat? No oh. way. Because it became 100.3 okay. the beat, and then oh. I don't know what that became. All right, fine. Yeah, but I mean, the shout out to DJ Curse and the Beat Junkies. Uh, DJ Curse used to live down the street. He was legendary in terms of like, you know, like that kind of stuff. And so I just saw everything and everything. And then I had another buddy that was divorced, just like me. And so like I would see him. Um, that's cute. You incepted, you put that thought in my mind of like these two little kids that were already divorced. Oh, two but kids I know what, but I yeah, know what yeah, you yeah. meant. Like you meant like you came from a family that already had divorced parents, but I just pictured you being like fucking disheveled and like, fuck, the wife took it all. You know, yeah, like yeah. as a little kid. Anyway. Yeah, no, he, his parents were divorced, but then unlike mine, like so I saw two different divorce scenarios. Mine was I, um, I live with my mom and my dad came to visit. He was the type of kid that was one week here, one week there. Oh. So every other week, I'd like knock on the door. I'm like, hey, is Alex home? No. And then, no, he's uh, with his dads or moms or whatever. And then uh, I had the, down the street, I had the, the Korean twins I always tell you about that, like, since they were, like, seven or eight, they... Like hockey stars? Yeah, hockey stars or twins. And then they would be, like, doing sprints down with rollerblades with the rope tied to a tire to get faster. And they're the ones doing, like, crazy hockey drills. And then so you see, like... 
how disciplined kids can be at a young age. So that was like our street. It was just popping like that. Like Damn. sometimes those two twins would come and join our street hockey game and just wreck it. And then there's times where they're just like, no, I got a game. So they're just doing their own sprints. And then we're just freaking sucking on push pops on the side, just doing all kinds of like stuff. push pops. You remember push pops? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is shit. Yeah. And then the fucking cardboard would get all soggy. And then like if you don't eat it fast enough, like I don't know what that ice cream was made out of, but it wasn't like milk. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like weird. weird. Like it would be, it would be kind of like grainy a little bit. Yeah, it was almost like the the froth of a root beer float or something. Yeah, it was kind of nuts. Yeah, but so I, I saw all of that, and I think at a young age, after seeing the whole scope of life, I would say the one that I hated the most was mine, and then the second one was Polo's. Damn, yours was worse than his, huh? Well, mine is because there's just zero freedom. And then there's zero freedom. And I, to me, it was, felt worse to be like lower middle class, but still like stable, you know, like because my parents like I think if they were together and they had a joint income, it would have been middle class for sure. But like one person's salary raising someone else, I think immediately puts you in lower middle class, at least based off the amount of money my mom made. But being lower middle class, but always acting like. You guys were extremely poor or like buy me the bike of my dreams. And then because of her psychic friend, uh, she would chain it to the wall and I won't be able to ride it until I'm 11. Like that to me is like worse. I'm like, just tell me we're too poor to have a bike. Like, why do you buy the bike? And it's the sickest bike on the street. And then you're like, oh, no, they said you're going to get into a giant accident. So they, so that's chained to the wall. And I'm you like, stare at it every day. Yeah, I stare at it every day. I'm like, what the Aww. fuck is going on? You know? So it was just, it was like that. It was like, it was just so, the the signals are so confusing. And maybe that's why I'm so logical now. But the signals are so confusing that there was zero logic. So I, there was no like, there's no, no anchor point for me to hold on and then understand how to build a life around it. It was just, this was this, and then that is that. But then it could switch anytime. And then this is exactly contradictory to that. And then so I, I think just at a young age, I just knew this all sucked. And uh, like, like you know, my, my friend Polo, he was like, you just know his parents are going to come home. They're not going to come they're home? They're not. So you're just like, <laughs> okay, cool. If you know they're not going to come home, you know how to live life. You know? Um, you know, the baby's going to cry, get that full some milk. And then sometimes the baby would just be chilling on a lawn chair in the front while like Polo was like skateboarding in the front. So he was still like being responsible as much as he could. Like he, he was actually a cool dude. And then if anyone tried to fuck with us on the street, like he would just step up immediately. He'd How like, old are you in relation to Polo at this time? Because you said he's 13. Are you uh, like he, six? He's like seven? 14. I was probably like seven or eight. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like I've seen him step up to like 18 year olds and stuff. Like Poor he's, buddy, like he was, he was dope. Like he was, uh, like anyone that tried to fuck with anyone of us on the street, like he would, people that are like two heads taller than him, he would like just step to him because he's just so used to it, you know? Oh. So like, um, but like I, I would see that and I'm like, there's logic in that house. Yeah. I understand it. I'm like, this 14 year old, he shouldn't be driving, but I understand it. There's no license. He can't, he has to get food and stuff. So he's driving. I understand all of that. In my house, it's like, here's my favorite snack, but you lock it away. I'm like, okay, so I do have snacks, but I can't eat it. Okay. I don't understand that, you know? And then it's like, uh, can I walk to my friend's house? Uh, no, you can't, uh, but you're going to walk to Kung Fu. I'm like, wait, what? So what, wait, what do you mean? Like the, the Kung Fu is even further distance than it's at night. I don't like what, what's, you know, it was just nothing like made sense. It's almost like rules were made up to be the convenience of the parents. Yeah. So that to me was. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That to me was just way worse. And I just didn't understand any of it. So I'm like, I don't want this and I don't want that. So that's why even now, like when I like, you know, discipline Taika, like I'm like, you're going to go to time. I let them know way ahead of time. I'm like, if this happens one more time, you're going to go to timeout. Right. Like you always hear me warn him. I don't just go straight to the discipline. And then technically he has two chances because I said one more time before he goes to timeout. So he can do it one more time. Then I go next time we're going to go to timeout. So I always try to lay the law of the land and let him know the landscape. And he makes his own choices because yeah. that's one thing that I hated. Yeah. It was just like I never felt like any of my choices had any logical repercussions. They're just the way it is for no fucking reason. And I hated that. Damn, that all, you all make sense now to me. Like more and more. Like every time we film one of these things, yeah, I sometimes forget we're even filming because I'm just so into the story that I'm like, now I get it. And it all makes, makes sense. sense. Thank you, TikTok. Chinga tu madre. <laughs> Thank you, TikTok. Uh, on the chinga tu madre note, we're going to introduce our sponsors. 
Alrighty, so I'm here to talk about one of my favorite app games that I play all the time, and it's called Best Fiends. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know I'm about Best Fiends. It's the cutest game that you can play. It's a really big distressor for me. Um, I'm, you know, you guys know I own several businesses, so I'm constantly dealing with like adult problems. So when I get home, I want to unwind. I want to just be in a happy mood. And then once I put Taika to sleep, I get even happier. I'm just kidding, but not really. And now it's me time. And on my me time, I want to play Best Fiends. It's the cutest game because it's like you're collecting your little insect buddies and their ultimate goal is to kill all these slugs because they keep ruining their freaking garden. And now that traveling is opening up and um, I've been doing a little bit more of that, I absolutely love it even more because I didn't realize how many other games don't let you play, like they don't let you continue your play offline. And if you're in an airplane, you have zero online or you probably don't want to pay for it online. They charge now. Yeah. It used to be part of it where it's just free for the flight. Now yeah. you have free texts, but everything else, if you want to browse a single thing, bam, you got to yeah. pay. Well, I don't have to worry about it because Best Fiends, you can continue your gameplay offline. And that for me is the most convenient, best thing ever because again, it's my distressor. So you guys, try this game. It's family friendly. It's easy to play, but it's still very challenging. Um, the graphics are constantly changing. It's super happy, super vibrant colors. Great for all ages. Taika likes watching me play it and he also likes to play it. Like that's how easy it is, okay? Um, so make sure to download Best Fiends for free today at the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends, but remove the R. Best Fiends. Alrighty, this episode is sponsored by Apostrophe, a prescription skincare company for people that are ready to take their acne seriously. So we all know prescription acne treatment, they really work but they are a headache and they're pretty hard to get a hold of. You have to take time off of work to see a doctor and then you sit in line at the pharmacy to finally get your medication. That's where Apostrophe comes in because they cut all of that stuff out. Apostrophe makes it easy to see a board certified dermatologist online. You'll get treated immediately and your medications are delivered to your home. I love living in this day and age because everything is about convenience and efficiency and apostrophe is just one of those examples. I absolutely love it. All you have to do is just simply fill out apostrophe's online questionnaire about your skin concerns and medical history. Then just snap a selfie and you send it to the dermatologist that will get back to you with a customized treatment plan tailored specifically for you and you know, whatever it is that you're trying to treat. The best part about Apostrophe is that it offers topical and oral medication so you can treat your acne from the inside out and the outside in. Apostrophe treats acne and they can also help you hit other skin care goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and dark spots. So it's not just about the acne, it's literally just anything having to do with your skin. Make sure to check them out, especially for listening to this podcast. You guys are going to get an additional bonus. You guys are going to get $15 off your first visit with the board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash bill, B-E-A-W, and use code bill. This code is only good for you guys, okay? So to get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash bill and click begin visit, then use code bill at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's apostrophe.com slash bill and use code bill to get your dermatology visit for $15 off. And thanks, apostrophe. And we're back. What part makes sense to you now? Like what's the... Oh, the whole logical thing, because you grew up with none. So I think for you, like we all have different coping mechanisms, right? Like yeah. for me, yeah. Um, because I had no freedom, but I still had logic that followed my no freedom. Like I can explain to you why. And now as I'm older, I'm like, oh, OK, I really appreciate it. Like I appreciate the fact that I was like on freaking, you know, such like tight surveillance and like house arrest. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. my mom had such a short leash on me. It's because just the environment that I grew up in was so volatile and like violent or even like the 10 o'clock curfew everyone it had all that. makes sense yeah. yeah like everyone had that your brother is just as scared of it as yeah. you so like although that sucks being like a 25 year old and still having that curfew but at least like you're like okay there's that one rule we all follow i yeah. get it yeah and it was consistent <laughs> yeah yeah so like i got it you know and then for me my coping me mechanism for all of that was like i just kind of find the silver lining 
Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I fucking hate it. I'm depressed. I'm sad or whatever. But I would always find this silver lining. So till this day, I can always find the good and the bad. It doesn't matter how bad the bad gets. Yeah. I'm always like, it's real. I'm really quick to being like, oh, well, this is what the good that's coming out of it. You know, that was yeah. mine. So then for you, um, you know, just like having zero logic and everything being kind of wishy-washy and just kind of getting pulled out of thin air. And then one day it's okay. But then literally the next hour or the next day, it's completely bad and you're like what the fuck like i think for you you just had no stability that that you turned to logic to kind of like make it all make sense or just to avoid feeling this type of confusion that you kept feeling so yeah that's why i'm like oh okay I, I like you make way more sense to me i see and it's fucking funny that you got with someone like me who is kind C of crazy like, <laughs> yeah it's hard to break the cycle maybe because i'm like break what cycle? oh yours <laughs> you know how they always say like you get with people like just like your parents yeah and i'm the, not that crazy yeah, though yeah, I, hey you're like hey, hey, hey wait give it to me how am i like that i don't know i don't know if i, wanna, I don't do i don't know if i want to have a bad day or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey well we're not spending most of it this is the most interaction we're having today uh, that's true okay fine um, I think your essence and my mom's essence is very similar. What the fuck? I think you're both. Well, um, she's very jolly. A lot of people like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's very driven. That's what the parts I'm talking about. Those are the parts I'm talking about. The parts I'm talking about is. I do. I do. There's times you, you where I do are, some shit. You guys are both very independent. That's and, for sure. I'll do some shit and I'm like, fuck. I think that's what his <laughs> mom would have done. <laughs> I think both of you guys are really independent, which is dope. Um, We're fun. And then both of you guys, I think, are very creative. Extreme. Your mom's creative. Look at her; she's fucking dancing in the forest. Like, the, I don't know if she's creative. No, I mean that's her. She's making choices. You know, like, like creativity to me. All creativity means to me is you see what the line is of the world, and it's your choice to stay within the lines or outside of the lines. All her choices are outside of the lines. Right. Yeah. Okay. All of your choices are outside of the lines. That's creative. Whether it's this much over, you know, whether it's wearing all black polo or. Wearing your polo shirt inside out, that's already creative. If the line is white polos, you know? And then so you're you're extremely creative. Um, okay, we're still, we're, we started off real good here. You're both crazy. Wait, in what way? And then you guys have... Uh, How am I crazy? You can't just fucking graze. You can't just gloss over that. Oh, and you guys both are cats, kitty cats. Okay, I get that part. Yeah. But what's the middle part? Which part? <laughs> the middle part? The one that you just glossed over. Well, my mom's crazy and I think you're crazy. Well, but that doesn't say shit. What's crazy though? And I feel like you know crazy. <sighs> Let me see. Yeah, yeah, I probably do. Well, I definitely think you're crazy. Well, I don't, I don't talk to fucking fortune tellers. That's for sure. You're not. Okay, so you're not that crazy. But I'm not crazy at all. <laughs> well, like yesterday, I was making fun of you, how you love to set yourself up for failure, right? That's not crazy. I think that's, that's funny. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we're on a diet, right? We're on the craziest diet right now. We're trying to really I explained get, that we're trying to, to get you. like sick ass, uh, like try to get like super lean. And then she's like, you know what? There's this delicious donut place. And uh, that we should try because we're well, out because in Santa Monica. Donuts are not gonna. Like, yeah, and I'm like, they're I'm not like, gonna fuck you up. Yeah, I'm like one. I'm like, sure, let's uh, let's let's get, let's get like one. You know, that's fine. And, and we're gonna walk there and walk back. I'm like, sure, let's get one. It's like a ten minute walk. We get there. And she's like, should we just get like a dozen? And I'm like, I didn't even say that. I didn't like, even prep you that hard. Hey, and I was like, I was like, you're giving me too much credit. I was like, sure, let's get let's get a dozen, right? And then me forgetting that she's already been baking cupcakes at home with Taika. So we come home and on our counter, there's a giant array of sweets. And so for you, it's always like uh, the, the, what I always make fun of you about. It's like, <laughs> is it time to go on a diet? All right, cool. Let's go buy some candy. And you just put it everywhere. Or like, it, are we in a rush right now? Oh, let me go re-roof the house. Because she always has these last minute crazy ideas for some reason. Like I forgot the other day we we're in a rush taking Taika somewhere. And then I think like you asked her mom and like she needs like like. I don't know, tire pressure or something. And I'm like, wait, what are you talking I'm about? Like, we don't have time for that right now. We can definitely come back. What tire pressure? You I don't know. You you're always being say, the, crazy, you okay, say the craziest things all okay, the time. I think because you're super logical and I'm not. Exactly. Which it makes sounds, you already crazy. Yeah, but it's not crazy. So the sweet thing, right? Yeah. The sweets thing. I was like, I, I'm just going to taste it because I know I'm disciplined when it comes to food. Like, I know that I'm on this goal and on this path and like it's really hard to shake me once I have my fucking eye on the prize, right? So for me, I'm like, I just want to see what the hype's all about and I knew that I have a lot of people that I can share this with. So I'm like, okay, let's just get the whole front row. Like they, they, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they display the no the donuts. 
uh, depending on their flavor. And there was like, I don't know, like eight different flavors. And I'm like, I'll get one of each. And I knew that I was just going to share with everyone. So I knew I was going to take like a little piece or like a bite of one of the ones that I wanted or just bites out of a few of them. Uh, and then I'm like, cool. Now I know what this is all about. I know what it tastes like. And I knew that we had cupcakes at home, but I don't even like sweets like that. Like I don't like pastries and stuff. That's your thing. Yeah. So for me to have an array of pastries specifically, then I'm just like, well, that's not going to affect me because I don't care for it. But if it was like a bunch of sweets that I bought, then I'm fucking myself because I love candy. Yeah. So that's why. So for you, because you like pastries, well, I mean, you I know can't it, control yourself. After you explain it all, I get it. But it's just funny from a person because the crazy is from my perspective, right? Yeah. So I think everyone has another judgment until they hear the context. and like, Oh, I get it. Yeah. But for oh, I me, just don't want to be compared from, to your from mom, me, right? Just Dude. peeping in from outside. I'm all just right? looking around. I'm like, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> Dude, I'm nowhere near your mom. I think I'm just full of a lot of color. That's what they would say about my mom. True. But she's crazy. So are you. You're getting that. I mean, my mom developed into what she is now. Like, no. you know the amount of I don't give a fucks? Like, you give a fuck a lot when you're like 13 and 15, right? And yeah. then they slowly don't give a fuck on things that you don't give a fuck about. And then by the time you're in college, you're, you're already like, I know I can look good when I want to. So a lot of girls look like shit in class. Because they know when I go club, I'm going to get dolled up, right? Then it gets to a point where you don't even shave your armpits like my mom. I think you're not there, but you're almost there. <gasps> oh, my God. Wow. This was really a rude awakening. Was it? Yeah. But you're, wow. you're, you're, you know you're like my mom. You guys have the same like kind of like character and essence and just craziness. Well, okay. So here's the, the thing. And the catness, too. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's one common denominator in both of these equations. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Don't bring me into this. You're the only thing. So maybe it's you that's turning these people, these poor, no. lively, colorful people no. into crazy fucking no, cats. You're, you're just nuts. Cat monsters. You're just nuts. Because you are the only one that's in the relationship with your mom where she fucking got crazy because you're such a little fucking fucker. You know, you know, before you, I was really normal. I was really normal. I would get ready all the time. You, you said you're, you're suppressed back then. You're like, your creativity was suppressed. You said, I help you unleash who you really are. That's what you said. Uh, Yeah, but then you flipped it on me. And that's a whole other podcast. No way, Jose. In the beginning, you were very free. But that was like maybe a couple months in. And then after that, you went freaking tiger dad on me. Um, and I was like, whoa, who is this dude? But I'm such a loyal down ass bitch that I was like, all right, let's write it. Let's see what happens. So you're the reason why I got crazy. See what I did there? No. Who's, Gaslighted who's, your ass. Whose idea is it to wear that furry hoodie? A fucking cold ass bitch like me. Exactly. You know who else has furry hoodies? No. My mom probably does. <laughs> you swear. Yeah, she probably got vests with like trims and shit like this on all well, over Well, because it. they sell it for girls like this. It's not. And then, and then you know, when you first dropped me off long time ago like to the airport my mom saw you and she's like i like that hat she's wearing <laughs> she keeps talking about this hat and i'm not a hat person <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like you guys are the same no way i'm not a hat person she keeps bringing up this story of this time and i'm like what are you guys talking i don't remember about? the hat you're wearing what fucking hat i don't wear hats i own a lot of hats because i wish i was a hat person no but it was a hat and i don't what hat though? Give it to I have me. To, I have to look for it, but if I bet you I could find it in your stack. It was like a cream colored or brown hat that you like wore. a baseball hat. No, no, not a baseball hat. What? I don't even know the name of the, these hats, but it's the it's similar to the hat that I wear that people always tell me I should be on Peaky Blinders. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I never wore that in public. That was your hat that I put on. No, this one was yours. What? Yeah. Similar to the one that you wear Peaky Blinders. You so it's even, not like the You weren't old, even, even with me yet. It's not like the old guy, the, the one that you wear yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, like that. But like a but different version. But I've never version. owned one of those. Pfft, I don't know where you got it from. I think you're tripping. No, I remember. Cause we I were, remember harder. Because I saw you wear the hat and I was like, oh, that's dope that she has hats like this. You are we weren't even together so yet. hard. What? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we weren't even together yet. Mm-hmm. Damn, you mom and you kept a fucking real close eye on me, huh? Mm -hmm. We weren't even together yet. Damn, yeah. I can't believe I friend zoned you like that. Um, I didn't friend zone you. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I don't think I'm crazy. I think I make a lot of logical sense. All right, 
But um, going back to the topic at hand, um, yeah, I, I can't say that I had any of that. Because for me, I didn't really get to explore my block. <laughs> oh, right. And I think I think it was just. And I think that's a good thing. Your block. My was, block was not. It's crazy man. now. And I'm sure like, it's you know, not as crazy as it was. Yeah. Before anything in the early all. 90s. It's just it's just way crazier. Like it's crazy now because we just have ghetto people on the block. Yeah. That like we have a fucking mechanic, a yeah. fucking self proclaimed fucking mechanic. That has a bunch of clients and a bunch of cars and projects With everywhere. With a canopy and he's just leaking oil on public uh, yeah, streets. Yeah, it's horrible. All his tools are rolling into the gutter. Yeah, and then we it's have... A mess. Uh, my mom has like a, a neighbor, a business owner. Um, his business, they keep jacking it. So now there's a bunch of people just kind of going in and out of his business because he's like never there. But that's like nothing compared to the shit I saw when I was growing yeah. up, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, like... And I, I had three other brothers and sisters. So there's four of us. So I grew up in a family, a bigger family than yours. And like, I really liked it. Cause I mean, that's just all I knew, right? Yeah. Like I just knew of a full house. And I did have the thought of like, dude, like I want to replicate this because it's like, this is my family. This is familiar. Like this is home. But it that that thought was so small. It was more like, I don't want to get married. I don't want to be tied down. I don't want kids. I don't want people telling me what the fuck to do. Like, that's where I was. When did you know you wanted to have kids then? Um, I think when it was, when I was in my, my early 20s. I think at that point, I had never, I had never felt like I needed anyone, like any guy. I never was dependent on any of, like my boyfriends and stuff. I was never really like in love with any one of them. Like I just felt like I didn't want to be lonely and they were just like my unlonely partner. Sounds like my mom too. Shut the fuck up. Are you fucking with me? No, my mom would tell me like, cause I was asking her like, why did you get married so late? And she was just telling me like, she didn't really understand why you needed a guy. And then so she's like, but I guess I'm supposed to lean into my husband and then so everyone also pressures, you know, in the Asian community. So they're like, you got to get a got to get a man, got to get a man. And that's when she's like, well, I'm fine. So she started looking like in the newspaper for a pen pal. And then when, even when my dad came, like she, her like own assessment of him wasn't like, oh, he's like Prince Charming. I love this guy. But he, she saw how much her parents loved them. And then like uh, my grandpa, but he's just such a stand up man. Like it's really hard to find dudes like this. Like this guy's up in the kitchen cleaning and, you know, he bounces from left to right. Like he, there's just like no real gender roles. Like he just does whatever. Like if the house needs something, he's doing it. And he was like, what he liked most about my dad is just proactivity. You know, if there's something that needs to be plugged, he's going to plug it. And I was like, all right, I guess I see all that too. And then, so it was just like one thing led to another. And then she ended up getting married. Damn, dog. Yeah, sounds very That's similar. That's literally where I was headed. Yeah. I was really headed in that direction. Yeah. Uh, and I'll explain that direction in a little bit, but I want to introduce our sponsors. Shout out to our sponsor, Zip Recruiter. If you're a business owner who's hiring, you're probably facing a lot of challenges when you're trying to find the right person for your role. Sometimes there's not enough applicants or they don't have the right skills or experience or there's too many resumes to sort through. And then by the time you look through all of them, you're like, it seems like everyone's good. And then now you're like, uh oh, now I have way too many people to interview. So that's why hiring can feel like you're trying to find a needle in a haystack. And yeah, you could post your job to some board or some other random website, but then all you can do is hope that the right person comes along, which is why ZipRecruiter.com is so awesome. And you should try ZipRecruiter for free using the code BEAW, B-E-A-W. Because when you post a job on ZipRecruiter, it gets sent out to over a hundred of the top job sites with one click. So they do all of the spreading around for you. Yes. And then they have their own matching technology that finds people with the right skills and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. So people don't just automatically get it, they ask them to apply and if they're interested, they'll come and look for you. And it's so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day, which Ooh. is super good, especially in a fast moving environment like a lot of startups are in. We need everything done yesterday, so this is super important. And as of right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at the website address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Bell, B-E-A-W. Once again, just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Bell, B-E-A-W. ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. And we're back. And fuck. Yeah, that's literally my, <laughs> my thought. But you're fucking me up right now, dude. 
And I don't, <laughs> you're fucking me up and I don't like it. How did I fuck you up? Because that's literally where my head was, <laughs> was at too. Yeah. And it wasn't my until. My mom was considered tall for Asian too. Shut the hell up. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't until I met my boyfriend in college that I was like, oh, okay. Like I'm following the path that my parents want me to follow. Like I didn't even know there were other paths to follow because that's what I saw my sister do. And she was like the closest to an adult that I had like um, unfiltered access to, I guess. You know, like I really got to see what she was going through. And I'm like, oh, okay, so that's the norm. And, and that, that was like my pillar of success. Like she was it, you know, like that was my role model. So I'm like, oh, okay. So then I just have to follow in those footsteps. Like my parents will be approving. Like I just didn't know that I could even go in a different direction. I didn't know there were options. And then, yes, yeah, so I met this guy. And did you ever had, ask your mom, like, why did you <clears throat> get married? Like try to really figure out like, why did you get married? Like, yeah, I know why she got married. Oh, okay. The same reason it? why most women her in her generation got I married. See. To kind of just escape their situation and like. Did you feel like that reason <clears throat> was good enough for you and like and no. applied to you? No, nah, never. How come you never just stood your ground and go, fuck it, I'm not going to get married then? Well, because I went against the grain so much that yeah. like it was like, wait, what's wrong with me? Why am I like. Oh, like, so you felt like it was something you needed to fix. Then. Yeah, I it was see. always just like why do I go against shit so much? Like, I'm not trying to. And then, like, my own logic made sense to me as to, you know, not wanting to have a guy to, like, depend on. Like, I didn't need it. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. I've gotten this far without any type of help, even for my parents. Like, they weren't providing Helping anything you, yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. Other than, and this is a big one, right? But they were, like, providing room and, like, shelter and food. Yeah. Um, And I guess protection, right? Because I, I felt like that was, like, a safe haven for me. But... Other than that, everything else I was really just providing for myself, like get, getting to school, uh, you know, buying my books, buying my clothes, washing my clothes. Like, every, like I was basically renting a room without paying rent. So that's what it felt like. So I'm like, wait, if I'm able to do all this and I'm highly capable and I don't, and I'm not afraid of the shit that my mom would say I would should be afraid of, you know, like driving or getting my license or learning how to fucking drive stick or all these other things that that I guess I needed a dude for, um, I'm like, I don't really need it. But it wasn't until, you know, I was like, okay, let me get on this straight path and let me make them proud that I was like, okay, let's let's do the college thing. Let's settle down. Let's get the career thing going. And then I'm like, oh, okay. I saw my sister, you know, got her master's at, at you know, this age. And then she got married shortly after. And then she bought a house. But the house came first because you can't get married with, and then start renting. Like, that's not success. Yeah. So then I was following that path because they were so proud of her. And I'm like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Like, I get it. Okay, I'm understanding this adult shit. And then, um, so I met the guy that like, you know, his family was stellar and like, uh, they loved me and I loved them. And then he had like a good head on his shoulders and like what he wanted to do was similar to the path that like my parents always told me about like go to a good school or just go to a school get your degree and then you start your career and then that whole thing right and so then I was like oh okay cool now I'm falling into place so that's where the idea of like having kids now came and then I'm like mm. oh okay I can see myself doing that and I'm like oh now I get it there is no such thing as like this movie fairy tale love at first sight type shit it's like gotta grow into it or something yeah like you just meet someone you're highly compatible with and then now you start building your lives together and then the love comes after like that's i was set on that and i'm like that's okay cool that makes sense now and little by little like i started forcing things to make sense in my head and that's like the kid thing where i'm like okay cool yeah i guess now i want like four kids because that's just what i knew yeah like, my own family so i'm like yeah four kids is not a lot <laughs> until you have one they're like oh you know, shit yeah i had no idea so until you have one taika or probably one bar oh god well remember i told you like everyone used to ask my mom how many kids she had she always go one dozen yeah so again <laughs> going back to the we weren't crazy it was just the same fucking common denominator in i like these that you said we though i like that you said we well, because you, you said you, me and my mom yeah, are Yeah, because you found this bond, this new bond, and you're on the same team now. I see that. With your mom. Oh, I have so much respect for your mom. Every time I see, every time I'm around your mom, I we look at each other with like, 
gray hair and like bags under eyes and we don't say shit we look at each other and we're like the same and you finish each other's sentences (laughs) fuck you (laughs) (laughs) we're the The victim what what oh victim of me yeah and like like we'll look at each other we sigh and we're like we know you guys have the qualities we know you guys have the qualities that i think even subconsciously i was already looking for someone like my mom and i think you had the same qualities and that's why i liked you so much you know you're talking about driving stick and stuff my mom got her license on a manual car so she's always been like very capable so wait you're saying you were attracted to your mom hell yeah she's fucking weird that's fucking weird bro she's still fine (laughs) and then like uh you know growing up as a kid you know how we always had roommates and stuff and then we didn't have like internet so just growing up seeing my mom like post we need a roommate like on either telephone poles or like in front of a supermarket like she just had this independence of like when something was gonna happen uh if something was gonna happen she didn't need a man to go fix it i fucking hate that like she would always oh i'll do it She'll, she'll she'll always do it right and then so i think that was my concept of a woman just someone that's extremely strong that uh really didn't thank god like someone that could like do her own shit right thank god and then you know when i was like when we first started talking like my ideal picture of a family outing is i have my own pack my wife has her own pack and we're carrying shit with the kid going to our hike into our campsite whereas like most of the girls that i knew at that time and that's why i think it was so easy for me to be single was like can you carry my shit you know so it'd always be like the dude with like two things and then then i'm like well that means you're completely dependent on this person like to me, I saw like two independent forces joining, creating a super team yeah. rather than like a 90-10 to make one full team. I saw 100-100 to make 200%, you know? Yeah. And then so like, cause I saw that out of my mom, my whole life she was able to do, she was able to do that. And so when I saw you, like I was like, those broad shoulders you carry uh, <laughs> fuck you fuck you, you. you carry uh, i don't a have broad shoulders pe- these, these legs are made for walking these big feet are made for stomping and i was like you know <laughs> I I was, like, knocking on this like it was pretty feels pretty solid what the fuck are you like shopping <laughs> these hands these hands are made for carrying coolers it's my elbow I'm dummy like, i'm like good I'm like this is a good neck good, where, where are the hips at like, good so- good solid cow right here hey what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> but i think subconsciously that's what i was looking for sense. you know like independence yeah. and like i mean you remind me a lot of my dad like someone that doesn't need like um like i don't need anyone I, if i need to do something i'll go do it you know and then that's why like i like he, when, when you're with taika like like when when uh when we first got together you know how we kind of knew we were soulmates and everything like i just everything in my mind of what i thought a woman should be checked off and so, but you didn't think she was gonna be this fine, though. No, nah, I don't know she's gonna be this fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's always weird when you. And you don't have me. a mustache like my mom, which is really good. I mean, but we grow into it, baby. Uh, Jesus. I'm sure. I'm sure she didn't have one either. Yeah, and so like in the beginning, um, you know, even though I'm super disciplined and I was like always putting condom on all the time, um, I just knew that you were gonna be the mom of our kid, and so I never, even if we were risky, I didn't really mind it. Because I, I mean, yeah, same. Because I knew you were gonna be the right mom. And I knew it wasn't going to be like if I was gone or anything, like your world is over and you couldn't do anything. I knew that like. I'm, yeah, the world gets better when you. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I honestly, I knew that if I was gone, um, I could be easily replaced. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to be. I don't want to be the like, oh, like, are you telling me you just moved on to another guy? And I'm like, because that means that I was uh, that um, that you were dependent on me. You know, I wanted to be where it's like. Yeah, I moved on, duh, because I'm fucking badass. Like, I'm like, good, because that's how I wanted it to be. Wow, how did you diss me and then, like, you brought it all back? And then you dissed your mom and then you brought it all back? I don't know. That's cutie. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was kind of, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want it. And then it was, and it wasn't until I met you and then the whole, like, soul connection and I had never experienced that before in my life and I'm like, what the fuck? This is so weird because I had never liked you. I'd like, I didn't even think twice about you. You know what I mean? I'm just like, oh, that's, that's like my boyfriend's friend, you know? Yeah. And even then it was like very minimal that, you know, because I'm just like, oh, these are just the homies. These are just like the, you know, the, the people we hang out with and we have a good time and like, these are good vibes. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, it was a day where we got snowed in and then we got to talking and I'm like, holy shit. What's happening to me? 
So then it wasn't until like we get together that I'm like, oh shit, this is wild. Like the like everything just kind of fell in place for me. And it was like, like it was like, duh, you have to have a family with this person. Like you have to have some sort of future. So it, like having kids was like not even a a second thought. Yeah, one of the things that I thought was super cute <laughs> was um like we're the I'm the better swimmer of the two. But there was times where like you and Tiger just hanging out in the hot tub. And then so you ended up teaching him how to swim. That's funny. And I think that's fucking awesome. Because, you know, it's like most people are like, you're better at this. You do this. I do this. You know, there's already like, I have to lean on you here. You lean on me here. But I never saw that in my mom. It was like, if she needed help with something, like sometimes I'll come home and then I'm like, who's this random white guy? He goes, oh, that's my coworker. Uh, you said you needed help with your fifth grade essay. Uh, this person, he was an English major. So I brought him home to help you. Like he, she, my mom just outsourced shit like that. Like she, she might, she should have been either a contractor for a house because she'd probably find electricians, plumbers like that, or a producer for a movie. Because that's that's me. Like growing up, like she was just like, I needed something. She goes, I'm like, oh, who's that guy? Oh, he's here to teach you how to surf. Remember, he said you want to learn how to surf. I'm like, doesn't that have a family? <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, Saturday morning he's here, so we better be go. We better go to the Doesn't beach. Did he have his own like five kids? Yeah, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? I'm like, how does my mom do these things? It's amazing. And then with you, it's like very similar. You know, like I don't when I leave, and then you send me these CUNY like photos and videos. Like my my mind never, I never have doubt. I never leave and go, oh fuck, Tyke is gonna have a boring time, or Gio's gonna bug the shit out of me because she doesn't know how to do X, Y, and Z. I know it's probably gonna be better because if anything, maybe I got in the way. Oh, 100%. Yeah, we do some cool shit every time you're gone. Yeah, and you always text me. Have you seen fun. the vlogs like when you had COVID? Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> we kicked yeah, the ass. Yeah, you guys were baking. And not, it just makes me so happy because I'm like, that's exactly what I pictured and what I wanted. Yeah, I could be a single mom real quick. Yeah, I wanted. But yeah. please, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I wanted Taika to, to have that, you know, where he felt like, like whether it's either parent, it was going to be party time. But if both parents are there, double party time. Yeah. That's cutie. Yeah. Oh, that's really cute. And I'm like, and I'm really happy that like, you know, the upbringing that you had and like the frustrations and the lack of outlets that you had. I'm I'm really happy that you've been able to sort through all that shit because none of that ever leaks into like the negative part of it never leaks into, you know, you disciplining Taika or like you've like really um, broken the cycle to that shit. I feel bad for that raccoon. Probably beat the, f let it all out on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh good thing i always feel like these inanimate objects have like some sort of soul i know and i fucked up i gave them to um a stupid girlfriend my uh, my girlfriend junior you year son of a dumbass that guy was so cool because he's a raccoon and you know what she probably did after you away. broke up like from being together fire. being together really you fucking pissed her off that much i don't know i'm just guessing the worst you're the, the worst. common denominator should, dude. I, should i try to find her like can i have the raccoon back why would she keep it <laughs> that raccoon means a lot to me unless she like absolutely adored you and has like a shrine i would throw it away i would have thrown that shit away a long time ago and that raccoon's cool you want to know why why because it wasn't the normal colors you know the, the let's look it up like the typical raccoon i we bet see, you can find it anywhere maybe the typical raccoon that we we see at least in california yeah it's, it's gray like, and black it's, yeah it's white gray and black okay what's what's this one this one was where it's white it's still white but where it's gray it's cream and then where it's black it's brown okay so, so it's more of like a cream brown raccoon rather than a uh uh black and gray one white uh stuffed animal raccoon it was cute. God, too. I hope it gives me fake ones and not real ones. I'm Googling this right now. Is it any of these? <laughs> these are these fucking cute. so funny. Is it any of these? It looks a lot like that one. Oh, then let's just get that one. But then that one, the eyes were, it wasn't so sad. That one almost has like a handlebar mustache like, what about eyes. this one? These are so cool. No, it was, yeah, it, was, it wasn't like this where the eyes are connected, but it was, it's very similar to that one. Let me see the tail. That the looks like bushy. a kind of teddy bear, dude. Exactly. That's why I liked it. Like, all my friends had teddy that bears. That one's so cute. Oh, okay. I'm only gifting raccoon, stuffed raccoons now like, instead of teddy bears. They're cute, huh? Yeah, and the tail was like this. The tail was like, yeah, white and brown like that and big and fluffy. And the tail was as tall as the raccoon itself. Oh, shit. Okay, then it's none of these. Yeah, you fucked up. But that yeah, was a that, very that, unique. That, 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 <laughs> that thing was so cool. Oh, yeah. No, I, man, I thought I, it was so cool because no one had one. Oh. Like, I mean, people just have teddy bears and stuff, you know, yeah. I a, but I had a raccoon. Aww. And then I found out that raccoons, um, so I found out that pandas are actually closer to the raccoon than the bear. 
And maybe that, I don't know, maybe that's how I started getting, getting into like animals and science and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Because I always thought like, how come pandas look like raccoons, but then they're a panda bear? And I started mm. looking into it and I'm like, oh, they're actually closely, they're like cousins. Raccoons and pandas are more cousins and actually not so much of a bear. Yeah, the raccoon's the ghetto version of the, the bear. Trash panda. Yeah, maybe it's good that you got rid of this this uh, poor little raccoon. Well, I could beat the living shit out of it. Well, yeah, and he probably just absorbed all this negativity that yeah. like you just gave it off to someone else and hopefully she threw it away, which I'm sure she did. I imagine uh, she still she has probably, it. She probably fell in love with me. She's probably sniffing it every night. I'm Oh, God, sniffing it. Your scent? Nah, dude. She's fucking <laughs> crazy. She's fucking crazy. Well, damn. This is a CUNY conversation. I like that you knew that you were going to marry me at four years old. That's how I'm going to remember the fucking story, okay? Remember it that I'm way. I'm going to tell remember everyone now. I'm like, Bart knew that he was going to meet me when he was four years old and he waited for me. He didn't have sex with any other girls because he knew it was going to be very special with me. Why are you laughing? Well, that's cute. I like your memory. <laughs> Fine. No, because remember I was telling you, like, um, like, I always have visions and I have very clear visions even before I start something. So, which is why, like, when I go shopping for stuff. It Who takes, sounds crazy now? You fucking fortune teller? I don't know. It's weird. It's always been like that. Like, so when I go shopping, you know, you're like, it takes you like an hour or two at the minimum for one section of the department store. And then it might take you in at like 12 hours. Why are you, why, why are you talking all kinds I'm of just, shit? I'm just putting it out there. Um, but for me. I hate shopping. But for me, like, I can literally walk to the back of the store and forward because everything that I want ever wanted before it's even created, I already know what I want. Right? So, I'm just literally fitting looking at things and see if it fits what my brain is telling me to get. So I don't go, I don't explore things. Oh, this is nice or that is nice. It's I already know what I want before I go buy things. And Okay, true. I do that. Right. And, and so like, and then I think that's why even with uh, like who my, who, who my, my, <laughs> <laughs> the, the partner that I end up with, I already had a vision. I had a clear vision. I knew who I was going to be with. And I, and I think. Wait, what do you mean by who? Like, like character traits. Yeah. Or even like physical traits. Just the person. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, just the person that I was going to be. you said clear vision. Yeah, the so clear I thought, vision. Like, I thought like you knew like the, the like the physical attributes of this person. Like they need to be tall. They so, need to some, have broad shoulders. Sometimes. sometimes. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, you, you know, I love backpacks, right? So like sometimes it's like in my mind I already know, okay, it's got to be all matte black backpack with like straps like this. So you knew you wanted a Mexican so, girl. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes. Sometimes it's like okay, I need a back. I need a backpack that has like a cup holder. It's all it's all function based. Got it. So it's it's different. So she has to have a big back. And, yeah, 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 and big hips. So it's different, right? But then so, um, but the clear vision of I, what I wanted for my life partner was, was your mom was already set, and um, so when I was dating, it was so easy to be like four months in. I'm like, so when you so when you wanted to give me the first kiss, did you picture your mom's face on my face? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> I opened I opened the visor to reveal your face. <laughs> You're and like, I pulled I pulled your uh, hand gloves off from the top of your elbow <laughs> and I pulled it all the way off. <laughs> You're like, oh mom. I mean Geo. Yeah. I'm like, can we just trim your armpit hair for a little bit? It's kind of just sticking out right never, now. Never, never. That would never happen. Yeah. I think that's probably why you liked me even more, because I have this thing against hair on my body. Yeah. Blech. And you don't like putting baby powder everywhere. Yet. Yeah, give me some time. That's true. We're moving to Vegas. It's pretty hot out there. That's I heard. true. Pretty damn dry. Yeah. No, that's why I, uh, it was, yeah, it was easy for me to get rid of, of like the girlfriends that I were, were with because I'm just like, okay, I thought you were it, but four months in, you're really far away from what I had in mind. So it was, it was just so easy. Versus, I, I think a lot of people that get stuck in relationships because they don't know what they're looking for. So they're already exploring, right? And like, oh, I like these four qualities of this person. This is so awesome. That was me, man. And then you start, you get really sucked into it. And then later on, you're like, wait a second. I don't think this is me at all. That's, yeah, that was me. But for me, I was like, I already knew. I'm like, I want like a, I need, I need a truck, you know? And you're like, oh, this thing's uh, kind of has truck what? capabilities. <sighs> can you, can you give me something more broad, elegant? Broad shoulder truck. I need a broad shoulder <laughs> Can you give me something more elegant? Like I need a Porsche. Yeah. Or I need a Ferrari. I need a broad shoulder truck that what can't make year up at its least? mind. Huh? What year? Nineteen eighty-three. Fucking shit! I don't even get a modern one with like some nice buttons. I'm pretty good. No, I'm you're you're eighty-three. You're eighty-three. What the fuck? That's old as shit. That's what you are, literally. I know, but I wanted to be a cool car. Is my fucking point, dude? You mean your next life? Well, you scored. All right, I, did. I, I know think, I did. I think I'm pretty fucking awesome. I think you're really awesome. Thank you. I think your mom's pretty awesome too. Honestly, she is. She's pretty awesome. She's crazy, but she's awesome. I mean, you had a fucked up upbringing, but I mean, well, you're here now. Yeah. You're alive. 
you're very successful you're very fucking intelligent you're very logical thanks to her you know yeah i so, think i think a lot of things that, a lot of things that i owe to her you owe her your life dude yeah just trying to be opposite of her <laughs> maybe successful but then you not too opposite because you're the love of your life is literally her that's that's very true and with that folks we leave you thank you so much for listening and tuning in and watching us uh we love you we appreciate you guys if there's anything we should be talking about hit us up about it hit us up like a lot of these topics actually come from you guys like i mean anytime i ever survey or i'm like hey what should we talk about on our podcast i'm usually throwing that up on my instagram stories these questions and these topics literally come from you guys. So I want to say thank you to that. And thank you to you guys. Um, and again, if you have anything you guys want us to talk about that we haven't already talked about or we've talked about it and you're like, okay, you guys talked about this like 10 years ago. Can we get an update? We're glad to do that too. So let us know. And thank you to our sponsors. All right. So thank you to Best Fiends. Make sure to download Best Fiends for free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Thank you to Apostrophe. Get $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash bell and use code bell, B-E-A-W. This code is only available to you guys. And thank you to Zip Recruiter. Right now, you guys can try it for free at ziprecruiter.com slash bell. This special offer is only good at ziprecruiter.com slash bell, B-E-A-W. And thank you to our sponsor, June B Matcha. If you guys are looking for affordable but ceremonial grade matcha, make sure you go to shopjumbi.com and use our code BELL. You get 10% off of all matcha, single serving or the tins. So go to shopjumbi.com, code BELL. And last but not least, me and Ma Bear's own brand, Barbell Brigade, we are the home of strength and everything that's related to getting you strong from training to supplements to apparel to lifting equipment and now also digital programs. So make sure you go check that out, barbellbrigade.com. See you guys next time. Bye.